<clears throat> Arizona is two wins away from playing in the Pac-12 championship game. We're going to preview both those games, a little bit of an odds and ends uh, that need to be talked about as well. All kinds of stuff. Let's get started here on Locked on Wildcats. You are Locked on Wildcats. Your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Wildcats your first listen of the day. I'm your host, Mike Luke. This show is brought to you by Game Time. All right, now, Arizona football. Who would have thought we would have been in this spot uh, earlier in the year where Arizona is essentially one or two games away from playing in the Pac-12 championship game? All right, so basically, here's what you need to have happen. You need to have Arizona beat ASU which uh, we are definitely going to preview. And then we need Oregon State to beat Oregon. Now, listen, um, Oregon State is a uh, significant underdog against Oregon, but I think that Oregon State has a real chance in this game, and we're going to talk about all that. But first, let's break down Arizona ASU. Um, first of all, I think Kenny Dillingham's actually going to be a pretty good coach for ASU. Um, there's, a lot to, uh, there's a lot to like about him, and honestly – um, he reminds me a little bit of Jed Fish. And what I mean is that he's at a place where you can tell that he is totally invested. He's not just, he doesn't just have one foot in the door, one foot out looking for the next spot. You can tell that he wants to be there. He wants this thing to be successful. And that to me is a huge part of, uh, uh, college basketball coaching or excuse me, college football coaching is wanting to actually be in the spot that you are at, especially when you're at places like Arizona and ASU, where you're not traditional blue bloods, where, you know, it's, uh, you've got some, uh, how do I put it exactly? You've got, um, you've got some, you know, you just don't have a tremendous amount of history. Uh, and that's something that I think you need to keep. I think that's something that you need to keep in mind, but um, he's definitely in the same exact spot that uh, that uh, Jed Fish was, and that he inherited an absolute mess. Um, I don't think that I'm. Uh, I don't think that I am uh, breaking any news there. That uh, he inherited that uh, um, that uh, Kenny Dillingham inherited an absolute mess, similar to what uh, similar to what Jed Fish inherited. All right, now. The big thing with uh, ASU is that they've actually had some games where they've been fairly competitive, uh, fairly competitive. And not only have they been fairly competitive, they've, uh, you know, they've, they've been pretty good, actually. But the problem is this. ASU can't score. Um, I would imagine Jaden Rashada is going to start in this game. And not only do I imagine Jaden Rashada is going to start, um, I think he's going to play the whole game. I think Kenny Dillingham wants to see what's uh, what's going on there. Um, and I think that's an opportunity for Arizona to be able to take advantage of this to a certain extent. Um, he hasn't played in six or seven weeks. And honestly, when he was in, he wasn't that good. Now, ASU has got some pretty good players on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Elijah Badger is very, very good. Um, Elijah Badger is probably one of about three or four players that if he was at the University of Arizona, he would probably start. And if he didn't start, he would be right in the rotation. He would, I would, I would imagine he would be that, uh, he'd be that third dude. Um, then after that, you've also got, um, you've also got Cameron Scadaboo. Scadaboo is not a bad player at all. Um, scrappy little guy feels like a player that the New England Patriots always have. Um, somebody like that. And then, but offensively though, they're kind of a train wreck. You don't really know what you're going to be able to get from game to game. And not only do you not know what you're not going to be able to get from game to game, you also have an idea that it's just going to be kind of a schizophrenic performance. One game, you might be good. One game, you might not be good. And um, not only will you might not be good, you might be terrible. Um, now, Arizona goes into this with a lot of advantages. Again, I think maybe ASU might have three or four, uh, might have what? three or four players that would probably play at Arizona or would start. That's kind of the uh, limitations right there. Um, and Arizona, I think on both sides of the ball should be able to dominate ASU. Um, let's well, actually, let's start with the defense here. Um, 
Arizona's defense at all, every single level is very, very good. And not only is it very good, there isn't really any weakness. You look at the defensive line. Um, Taylor Upshaw has been absolutely fantastic. We all know that. And not only do we know that uh, he's been fantastic, everybody along that line, it's a very hard line to be able to run against because you got so many dudes there. And not only do you have so many guys, you also have players that um, – you also have players that are able to, uh, for lack of a better term, um, if they don't get tackles, take up a lot of blockers. Big Bill Norton, our guy, Big Bill Norton, he has been absolutely fantastic. And not only has he been uh, fantastic, he has been something that Arizona hasn't had in a long time. And not only has Arizona not had a player like that in a long time, they also haven't had somebody that allows your linebackers to play downhill, to flow downhill. I don't see ASU uh, being able to run the ball really at all against Arizona. I think that D-line is too good. And it doesn't it feel weird saying that, that the D-line is too good, considering where we've been in the past. I think the D-line is just too good. Um, and then I think the linebackers are also big-time problems. Jacob Manu is a tackling machine. Not only is Jacob Manu a tackling machine, um, Another guy that when he pl starts playing and he starts getting downhill, he can get into the backfield. That's uh, We talked about it before the year. I think the next step for Jacob Manu was getting in the discussion where not only are you uh, getting tackles, but you're getting tackles closer to the line of scrimmage. That's where I think that it's uh, – that's where I think that uh, Arizona has been uh, very blessed. Um, now, with uh, – uh, this, but again, I just don't see how ASU is going to be able to run the ball. And Rashada being limited as well from a uh, from a foot perspective, or you know, from a leg perspective, I think it's going to be a problem for uh, ASU, and I think it's going to be a problem for ASU pretty much that entire game. Now, when it comes to the uh, rush, when it comes to the passing attack, I think it's going to be somewhat similar. Again, Elijah Badger is very, very good. I think that Elijah Badger will probably play on Sundays. Um, I don't know if he is the, uh, I don't know if he's the best. I don't know. If, uh, well, let's see. He's not, he's not one of the five best wide receivers in the conference, but he's probably somewhere between six and 10. And not only is he somewhere between six and 10, he is, uh, again, he's a player that you have to really account for. Uh, Jalen Conyers is kind of that same way. And, but I think that Arizona has more than enough players to be able to match up with that. Um, again, with Elijah Badger, you're going to be getting the Ephesians Price Sock Dicario Davis treatment, and that you don't generally have uh, multiple 6'2, 6'3, 6'4 cornerbacks that are looking you or looking down on you as you're running. And then Jalen Conyers, um, he is, uh, I, I think, you know, with Arizona, you got a variety of different options. Uh, Dalton Johnson could get in there. Again, Jalen Conyers is a really good player, but. He's also kind of been hit or miss this season. So I just don't know how ASU is going to score the ball. That is the biggest uh, concern I would have if I was an ASU Sun Devil fan. Now, offensively is where Arizona's really been making a name for itself. And a big part of the reason they've been making a name for himself, obviously, is Noah Fafita, who has stepped back in. And not only has he stepped back in, he has been the player that has been able to move the ball down the field. And not only move the ball down the field, He's also been that dude who's been able to just take advantage. If you're open, he's getting it to you. How many times did we talk about, you know, with uh, uh, Jaden Delora, where it always felt like you always had to do it, always felt like you had to have um, two players that were going to get all of the touches, and that was essentially going to be it. And if it wasn't those players, then it was going to be somebody. Uh, maybe Tanner McLaughlin, but you never got the feel. You never got the sense that this was going to be a full, uh, full, full uh, fledged effort right there. Now, one thing you don't have to worry about from a full fledged effort perspective is eBay motors. My friend, the right parts, the right fit, the right prices guaranteed. Check it out. eBay motors. You will thank me later. My friends, not only will you thank me later, the big part about eBay motors. It's so great is that everybody knows somebody that has been gouged by by, uh, whether it's the uh, has been gouged by whether it's I don't know the uh, uh, the people that get the parts whatever the case may be get the parts yourself and then go down and uh, uh, get the parts yourself from eBay Motors and then take it to somebody you trust don't waste money on something like this all right again 
eBay Motors, the right fit, the right part, the right prices. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. Okay, now, Arizona, though, offensively, they can hit you with a variety of different options here, and I don't think that ASU is going to really be able to stop any of them. Um, I think from a uh, passing perspective, Noah Fafita is going to be able to get T-Mac the ball when he wants. Jacob Cowing going to be able to get him the ball. Tanner McLaughlin. I would also start to look, though, for some other players to maybe get a little bit more to maybe get a little bit more run. And that's somebody like a Malachi Riley, for example. Um, he started to come open of late. I think Malachi Riley is uh, going to be a problem for Arizona opponents in the uh, in the future years. And as much as we gave him grief, you got it. We got to give Montana Lamonius Craig a lot of credit. Besides having a great name, he uh, has weathered the storm and he has turned out to play some pretty good football. Um, he is uh, he's got multiple touchdown catches the last two games. He's caught for almost a hundred yards. Um, a lot of people were wondering why in the world wasn't uh, why in the world wasn't he playing. Uh, or why was he playing when some of these other players weren't? Jed Fish, similar with Gunnar Maldonado, it's showing that he knew what was best. And not only did he know what was best, he had a uh, he had a trick up his sleeve right there because Montana has become an absolute monster. Not only has he become an absolute monster, um, he is also the uh, he's also somebody that I think next year you're probably going to think that is probably going to be a one of the uh, forefront players on this team. And if he's not, he's going to be right there. That's kind of where you're at with him. Um, now, uh, like I said, uh, Malachi Riley, Kevin Green, those dudes, I look for a big game out of Tanner McLaughlin. And from a running back perspective, I don't see how they're going to stop the little giant that is uh, Jonah Coleman. Jonah Coleman is, um, listen, Michael Wiley is absolutely fantastic. He is going to play, uh, I, I believe, and I agree with Jed Fish, that he's going to play in the NFL um, but not only do I believe that he's going to play in the NFL, I think he's going to have a long career in the NFL. Um, I think a big part of it is, um, I do think a big part of it is that um, he wears a defense down, Jonah Coleman. Whereas Michael Wiley gets out there, he catches the ball out of the backfield, he goes and uh, he makes plays. Whereas Jonah Coleman, he's looking to essentially uh, break your will. And that's something that he's been able to do and he's been able to do on a fairly consistent basis ever since taking over that starting running back spot. Uh, going into next year, I think that he's definitely going to be in that short uh, that short list, that short consideration for um, – the, uh, be the best running back in the conference. Listen, I mean, Bucky Irving's really good. There's going to be some other players I absolutely can uh, assure you of. But Jonah Coleman is an NFL running back. And between him, between um, uh, DJ Williams, Michael Wiley, I just don't know how ASU is going to be able to uh, defend all of that. And I think that's going to be a big problem. Also, I would love to see Arizona continue to, I would love to see Arizona continue to play with a little bit of chip. And if I'm Jed Fish, I am running up the score. I have no problem running up the score. What I also like about Jed, what I also like about Jed Fish is that Jed Fish has no problem being petty. I like coaches that have no problem being petty. Um, I think it's kind of a lost art. Uh, to way too many coaches take the high road and they're like, oh, you know, I don't really want to say anything. Like when George Rushing called out uh, uh, Jed Fish, he said, um, he goes, all right, well, we're, I'm going to talk about every single game. I am going to talk about how we have to take pride in developing our players. That is a huge aspect of, uh, I think, of being a coach. You've got to control the message. Jed Fish does exactly that. Jed Fish also against Utah. I love getting Jaden Delora in that game and having him march right down the field. Uh, well, not right down the field. A couple plays and go for a touchdown. Utah does it all the time with teams. They run up the score. They take fake uh, field goals. That's fine. Totally within their right. Jed Fish does the exact same thing. I am all about that. But as far as a prediction goes, I think this is going to be a – I don't think it's going to be a 70-7 to game – Although I would absolutely love for it to be a 70 to 7 game. I think it's going to be something more like 
37 to 13, 45 to 17, something like that. I think it's an easy cover. Um, I know it's a rivalry game. I've been to many games where the worst team won, but there is a huge gap between both of these teams, and I don't really see that one. I don't. I just don't see a path to victory for ASU, um, especially, too, because Noah Fafita, the great thing about having Noah Fafita in there is that you know that he is going to take care of the ball, and not only is he going to take care of the ball, he's not going to do anything that's going to put you in a bad position. Um, with uh, And when you have better teams – then the, when you have a better when you have better players, you need to be able to um, you need to be able to maximize your possessions. Not only maximize your possessions, you need to be able to. I mean, let's just be on, let's just be honest here. Not give them opportunities. Jaden Delora gave the other team opportunities. Noah Fafita does not give the other team opportunities, and I think that is a huge huge feather in his cap. Um, now. Arizona, obviously, if they want to play in the Pac-12 title game, they've got to be able to, they've got to obviously beat ASU. you got to take care of what you can take care of. But now, Arizona needs one other thing to happen to be able to possibly claim its first Pac-12 championship ever. We're going to talk about all of that. And again, you got to remember, too, you need multiple things to happen here. You need uh, Arizona to be able to beat ASU, but you also need Arizona, or you also need Oregon and Oregon State to be able to make that one happen. We are going to talk about that, but first, game time. You might say to yourself, "Man, I'd like to go to these games, but I don't know where to find it." Game time is here. Game time is your elixir. Game time says, "Help! We will, are here to help you, my friends." Um, download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Again, you will thank me later, my friends, because Game Time gets you some of the best prices at the best rates. And the great thing about it too, it's not just sports. You can get into concerts. You can get into a lot of different things. So again, download the Game Time app today. Use code Locked On for twenty dollars off. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, my friends, we have got a lot more to get to. Now, we need Oregon State to beat Oregon. Now, generally, I don't like Oregon State fans or not. I'll, let me rephrase this. Oregon State fans are a very scrappy bunch, and I like actually a lot of them, but a lot of them are also door jams. Um, but... Overall, though, I do I I applaud their passion, and honestly, I think they would be a very good fit in the uh, in the Big Twelve. I would dump ASU in a heartbeat and put in and put in uh, uh, Oregon State. I would have no problem doing that, but I'm not in charge of that. Uh, but now we need to talk about what it is on the uh, what it is on the court. Um, or on the field, excuse me. Oregon State is a solid team. I think that that's the best team that Arizona has played all season. Um, I think they're actually better than Washington, at least from how they matched up with Arizona. Um, they're solid on both sides of the ball, and I think that's what's also interesting, is that not only are they solid on both sides of the ball, they also have a capacity to be able to um, run the ball. And I think you're going to need that. You're not only, you're going to be absolutely be able to need to, you're all absolutely going to be able to need to run the ball against Oregon because Oregon can put up points in a hurry. We all know the best way to be able to do that is to, uh, get, um, well, let's just be honest here is to, win, uh, win, win that right there. And I think with Damian Martinez, they'll be able to do that. Now, offensively, it's going to be fascinating. We're going to find out just how good this Oregon offense is. Again, they've been absolutely smoking teams. They've been able to look very, very good. And not only have they looked very good doing it, they've also, you know, uh, just across the board, whether it's Franklin, whether it's Knicks, whether it's Irving, they got dudes at every position. But also, they've been beating up on a lot of bad teams. Um, now, listen, they played Washington. They probably should have won that game against Washington, but they didn't win that game. But it also goes to show you, too, that, uh, you know, it was a 33-30 to 30 game against a good defense. They're also not going to put up 9,000 points um, against uh, Arizona. So Arizona's got to be able – or, excuse me, Oregon State. Oregon State's got to be able, though, to also put the ball in the basket. And a big part of that is you have got – Again, you've got to be able to put the ball in the basket. You've got to be able to put the ball in the end zone. You have got to be able to put, excuse me, you've, uh, G.J. Uyagalele, 
You got to be, you got to be good. You can't have one of these 15 for 29, 171 yards, two touchdowns or four interception games or no, uh, no touchdowns, two interceptions. That can't be the case. Uh, he's got to play well and he can play well. Now, listen, he is not the dude that I think a lot of people were uh, hoping that he was going to be coming out um, where he was kind of that vintage, where he was kind of, well, let's just be honest. He was kind of that vintage, uh, you know, top player in the country, five-star type dude. He's not, he's not that guy. If he's going to play in the NFL, he's going to be a backup. He's not that, but again, he should be solid enough. And if he's solid enough, then I think that Oregon state's got a real, real chance in this game. Um, I, you know what? I'm excited. I am going to say that Oregon state is, I'm going to say that Oregon state is um, going to be, I think Oregon state is something like, um, I think they're going to win this game. Like it's going to be 27 to 24. I think it's going to be a little bit more low scoring. And if that happens and Arizona takes care of business, there in the PAC 12 championship game. Would that not be the coolest thing ever? If Arizona in its last year won the conference for the first time. And honestly, these two scenarios, these aren't outlandish. It's not like we need 35 different things to happen or whatever the case may be. You just need Arizona to be able to, you just need Arizona to essentially be able to take care of its own business, obviously. And then you need Oregon State, which is a legitimate top 15 team to be able to show out. Now, granted, I don't love that the game is in Eugene. As a matter of fact, I hate that the game is in Eugene, but that's also not the worst thing because I still believe that Oregon State is a team that is more than equipped to possibly win on the road if they need to do that. Um, so that's kind of where we're at there. But as always, that's what we need, my friends. Arizona, we need Arizona to um, uh, take care of business against ASU. Not only do we need Arizona to take care of business against ASU, we are all Oregon State Beaver fans or big time Oregon State Beaver fans. That's where we're at. All right. On that note, we're signing off, but we will be back with you. As always, thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats.